folks, welcome back to another top 10 list with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today, we're going to be talking about the top 10 games that I have reviewed here on the flip side. So I know there's a lot of other reviews out there that I've done with the Dice Tower and so forth, but I've only done 13 uh, reviews since I've started uh, back in the beginning of May. So uh, what I figured I would do is uh, every time I get to, uh, let's say, another factor of 10, every time I get to another factor of 10 or an increment, maybe that's a better word, of 10, then I'll uh, maybe revisit these games and continually keep you know, updating the top 10 list. Maybe after a while I'll, I'll take it to top 20, but I'll keep updating my top 10 list so that if a new review comes in and uh, it kind of squeaks in above some of the other ones, I'll be able to show that uh, periodically. And I'm going to put them in order from 10 to 1, 1 of course being the best, 10 being uh, the least best, I guess, if, that's, if that makes any sense. But what I'm just basically trying to say is that I like all of these games. These are all good games. But I'm going to put them in order because, eh, why not? So starting off the list, uh, we're going to go with number 10, Planet. Planet is a game that uh, is cool for me because of its tactile uh, quality. It is the best way that I can put it. I love having that little hexagonal globe in my hand and I can magnetically put all of these little things and I'm building something. It's almost uh, a Lego-esque type um, um, vibe that I'm getting. I'm getting, I'm putting together this thing uh, and not only that, I'm also being able to score points with this thing that I'm building. And that's why uh, it squeaked onto my list at number 10. I really enjoy it. I think it's a great game. Uh, it's a great family game. But uh, the reason it, it beat out three other games, and we'll talk about those three other games, is because of that tactile uh, quality that it has. So that's my number 10, Planet. My number 9 is a word game that I didn't really expect to enjoy that much, but it's called Illiterati. Uh, and I think one of the reasons why it kind of hits home with me is that they really kind of baked the theme into the, the, the mechanisms of the game, and that's what I really enjoy that games do, some games do, is when they take that theme and they really kind of bake it into the entire game, um, and they really kind of hinge the game's mechanism, mechanisms upon that theme. And that's what Illiterati did. Uh, it is just a cooperative word-building game, uh, and you would think that it was it was meant for people that have a better vocabulary than others, but it really isn't. Um, and on top of that, the game does have the possibility for an alpha player to kind of take control, but there are rules built into the game that are meant to combat that alpha player kind of taking over because there are a lot of uh, restrictions or negative repercussions that could happen if one person is building all of the words and have all of the words in front of them. So that's a cool thing as well. So I really enjoyed Literati. Wasn't expecting to, but I really did. So that's my number nine. My number eight is a game by Reiner Knizia called My City. It's a legacy building, uh, well, it's a legacy game with pattern building and tile placement. Uh, and I really enjoyed this. Uh, I am, I'm enjoying the storyline. We haven't completed the game yet, the legacy game. Uh, uh, but on top of that, there is also a, a one-off version of the game that you can play that um, I think is great because legacy games are cool. But generally speaking, uh, once you've played the entire Legacy game, now you just have a box of components that you can't really use anymore. And that's not the case with My City. The Legacy game is more f enjoyable, in my opinion, but the uh, one-off version that you can play with anybody at any time, that also carries with it that same level of uh, uh, satisfaction where you're uh, able to do a game where you can compete with other people and you don't have to have any of that legacy stuff in it. I really think that that's a cool thing that they did both of those in the same box uh, because that's going to uh, make it have a little bit more longevity on my shelf. So that's my number eight, My City. 
Number seven is a quick little card game with phenomenal artwork called Valbara. Uh, it's a neat little set collection game where you're trying to uh, collect different uh, sets of lands in your tableau. And each of those lands are going to scoring, be scoring you different points throughout the course of the game. Uh, but on top of that, there's this neat little mechanism where you have a deck full of villagers. And those villagers will fire off at different points uh, from 1 to 12. And... Uh, they each have little special abilities, and those special abilities can sometimes help you. They can sometimes help uh, um, help other people, but you get to go uh, before they do, that kind of thing. Uh, but they can also hurt some other people as well. So there's uh, a, a really good balance of helping myself, helping other people, uh, kind of uh, middle-of-the-road abilities that are in those 12 characters. And I really enjoyed the game. Uh, it's a, a very cool entry-level game as well. Uh, that I think a lot of people will be able to latch on to because there's a lot of um, simple mechanisms, but there's a lot of interesting choices that have to be made throughout the course of the game. Really great artwork as well. So that's my number seven, Valbara. My number six is a two-player game from Gray Fox Games called Ragnaroks. Now, if you like uh, Santorini, uh, Ragnaroks is by the same... Um, uh, designer. If you like Onitama, you're going to have the kind of the same kind of vibe uh, where it's mono e mono going against each other and uh, trying to outwit each other on a set course of actions. And so uh, you're you're building up uh, these walls of rocks and you're trying to corner off uh, different areas for your Vikings to settle on this island. Uh, but at the same time, you're trying to uh, make the areas that your opponent's Vikings are cornering off as small as possible so that you'll score more points for your little slice of that island and uh, your opponent will score fewer points for their slices of the island. It's a really great game, great components as well. Uh, and of course, I'm a sucker for Viking themed games. So there you have it. But uh, that's my number six, Ragnaroks. My number five is a game that's been very popular, and that is Flamecraft. I picked this up based on the artwork alone and all of the buzz that was going on with the game. Everybody was saying how, much, how good of a game this was, so I was like, okay, I'll bite, and bite I did. Sunk my teeth into this one, and uh, my family, myself, uh, my gaming group, we've all really enjoyed this game a lot. It's a very cute worker placement well, maybe not worker placement. Yeah, I guess it is a worker placement game. Uh, but you're you're trying to uh, manage your resources and and uh, uh, build up the uh, the different shops that are in the town and score as many points as you possibly can and and, and get the best reputation. And it it just has a whole lot of really good stuff going for it. And I really enjoyed it a lot. So that is my number five. Flamecraft. My number four is a uh, review that's actually going to be coming out on Tuesday, so there's a little bit of a spoiler here. So if you don't want spoilers, uh, maybe mute this for just a few seconds, and, and then you can come back for my number uh, three. But my number four is Stone Spine Architects. I really enjoyed this game. A great game about uh, building up your dungeon and uh, trying to make it uh, score uh, the most points. Uh, more than points than your your opponents, and it's just a great spatial organization pattern building game uh, where you're trying to uh, get as many different elements into your uh, dungeon and, and try to get your dungeon uh, or arranged in such a way to where all of the chambers are are matched to the entrance and to the exit, so you can score a truckload of points there. You have a blueprint that you're going off of, and you're trying to trying to score as many of those elements as you can to maximize points there. And there are objectives that you're going to to uh, pick throughout the course of the game. There's a public objective that everybody's trying to go for. It's just a really great game. The solo mode of the game was also very well done, and I enjoyed enjoyed that a lot too, which is saying a lot because I'm not really a solo gamer. So this one hit on all of the cylinders for me and uh, I really enjoyed it. So my number four is Stone Spine Architects. My number three is a game that I've been talking about for a very long time as I've 
watched it kind of proceed through its different iterations, uh, and that is Deliverance. This is a Christian-themed dungeon crawler where angels are coming in and battling against uh, the forces of evil and trying to uh, hold those at bay and, and, and uh, knock them out so that you can uh, help the, the Christians that are in the town and being oppressed by those demons. Um, it is a great game, and I think it's uh, one of the first, well, not the first, but it's one of many games that are having a Christian theme nowadays that are really kind of bringing Christian-themed board games back into the spotlight. It used to be that Christian-themed games were just like Bibleopoly and 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 Bible Trivial Pursuit, and, and that's the extent and uh, there are, have been a lot of games that are coming out, Jerusalem, Anno Domini, um, uh, Nehemiah. Uh, there's a new one that I haven't played yet, but it's getting a lot of buzz. Ezra, Nehemiah, uh, Deliverance, um, The Unseen, You've Been Chosen. There's all of these games that are coming out that are Christian-themed, and, and they're really modern. And, and this is really at, the, at the, the forefront of that new movement, if we can call it that. So Deliverance is a great game, and I'm glad that I backed it. I can't wait for my copy to get in. Uh, I've, I've since mailed the uh, copy that I did the review of uh, off to its, its next user. So uh, I'm just, I can't wait for my copy to come in. That's my number three, Deliverance. My number two is Marvel Zombies, and I've been a Zombicide fan ever since Black Plague came out, and uh, I've enjoyed most of the iterations that have come out since Black Plague. I haven't gone back and tried Zombicide 2.0 yet, but uh, that's on the docket, but not super high on the priority list. But Marvel Zombies is a super cool iteration of Zombicide. I, I'm a huge Marvel fan. Uh, the What If series that was on Disney Plus was a huge... Uh, plus in my book as well. Uh, zombie Marvel Zombies was a terrific experience. Great miniatures, uh, great mechanisms that kind of uh, leveled the playing field and made the super-powered heroes uh, still have um, a tough time with a bunch of shield agents running around and a couple of uh, uh, regular heroes popping up every once in a while too. So really enjoyed my time with Marvel Zombies. Uh, uh, JT and I actually reviewed that one together, Two Dudes Reviews, so you can check that out. But that's my number two, Marvel Zombies. And finally, my number one is Marvel Dice Throne. Um, Bubba Stalkup from Love Thy Nerd actually uh, recommended that I try Dice Throne, uh, the basic version. Um, I went down and, and, and met with uh, him and Andrew Lowen from uh, the Designer of Deliverance because uh, I was in San Antonio and they're right in that area. So we decided to meet together. And I, I told both of them, I said, hey, guys, I'm, I'm just getting my feet back into this, this uh, river. So what are some games that you think I should cover? Uh, as I'm getting back into the whole uh, creator content uh, thing. And uh, Dice Throne was one of those games. And I bought a, a just a, 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 a two-pack of Marvel Dice Throne down there. I, I, I couldn't didn't have the chain uh, to go after Season 1 of Dice Throne or Season 2 of Dice Throne. Night's Watch Games had both of those. But I did pick up one of the one of the uh, duo packs of Marvel Dice Throne, and since then I've picked up another duo pack. And my wife bought me the four pack of Marvel Dice Throne, so now I have all eight characters for Marvel Dice Throne because we enjoy it that much. Uh, it's just a great game. It has a great uh, recognizable mechanism of, of of kind of the Yahtzee style of rolling dice and and trying to come up with a, the right combination and and just knocking your opponents. Uh, stuff down. Uh, it's not a basic game though, so I don't think it's entry level, but uh, gamers I think should really enjoy this one. So if you haven't tried Dice Throne and you like Marvel, uh, I would definitely go through Marvel Dice Throne and give that a whirl because it is uh, a great, a great game and I enjoy it a lot. So that's my number one, Marvel Dice Throne. So there were basically uh, three games that I have already reviewed that didn't quite make the list. So I did want to mention those because they are I still enjoy them. They're great games, and uh, uh, I don't think that uh, they warrant not being spoken about. Resist is a single-player uh, game, a solo game, that uh, I would have, would have easily made the list. But there are other games on the list that have solo modes. And I enjoy those games more than Resist. And Resist is only a solo player game, which is 
really the only reason it didn't make this list with me not really being a solo gamer. I still really enjoyed my time with Resist and I think it's a great game. So if you are a solo gamer uh, and you haven't tried it yet, definitely give it a whirl. It's not going to hit your pocketbook too hard, um, but it is going to give you a lot of uh, playtime. Uh, and enjoyment, I think. So uh, give that one a try. Longboard is a filler game, and I'm not really a huge filler game kind of person. I believe Longboard is one of the ones that I gave uh, one thumb up to because I'm not really a filler game person. It's not, not the kinds of games that I'm going to choose to play all the time, but it definitely fills that niche well of being a filler game because uh, super easy me mechanisms uh, and um, it, it's an enjoyable experience. Uh, so that's Longboard. Uh, Ticket to Ride Amsterdam. Um, I enjoy these other 10 games more than Ticket to Ride. If I'm going to play Ticket to Ride, I'm going to be choosing Amsterdam, New York, uh, London, or San Francisco. Those are the four of the smaller versions of Ticket to Ride that I have. These smaller versions are my go-tos for Ticket to Ride right now, and Amsterdam is definitely at the top of it. But that's about it for my top 10 games that I have reviewed so far. And again, like I said at the beginning of the uh, video, we'll be uh, updating this uh, top 10 as we get to uh, further levels of 10 uh, uh, as we go out into the future. So maybe it'll turn out to be uh, once a month or something like that, we'll have a top, type, top 10 like this come out. But until then, thanks for joining me. I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care.